The 2019 NBA Draft is just hours away. On June 20th, 2019, a crop of new and talented players will find a new home. But as you know, it's not always fine and dandy. If you've been following me, you know I've been making my lists of biggest draft busts by the decades. We're already gone through the 20th century, specifically the 60s, 70s, 80s and the 90s, and since the draft is so close, I thought this was a great time to do such a video again. Hey guys, hope you're doing well, Purple Brunch here, and this time I want you to watch the biggest draft bust of the 2000s. Let me say first that there were a lot of them, so as I am in a good mood, heck, in a hard working mood, I'll give you not just the top 10, but the top 25 NBA draft busts of the 2000s. There's a lot of players, so let's start. Number 1. Stromile Swift, second pick of the 2000 NBA draft. The 6 foot 10 power forward slash center was such an exciting prospect. He was labeled the next Sean Kemp and maybe he was supposed to be. It's just that he wasn't. His college career wasn't that great as well. Two years in Louisiana State University and averages of only 13.4 points and 7 rebounds. That wouldn't scream to me that he's a can't miss prospect, but it was enough for the Vancouver Grizzlies who drafted him with the second pick of the 2000 NBA draft, such confirming that they are the worst organization there ever was. In his rookie season, Swift averaged only 4.9 points and 3.6 rebounds, and his best season ever was his second season in the NBA, when he averaged 11.8 points and 6.3 rebounds. He never carved a starter role which for the second pick is unacceptable, but he did spend 10 seasons in the NBA, somehow. His career averages though, 19.8 minutes, 8.4 points, 4.6 rebounds, 21.3 win shares. Second pick worthy? I think not. Number 2. Darius Miles, third pick of the 2000 NBA Draft. We stay in the 2000 NBA Draft and we will for a while because it just was that bad. Just a pick after Stromile Swift, the Los Angeles Clippers chose Darius Miles with the third pick. At the time, he was the highest drafted player ever right from the high school. He was talented, really talented. In his rookie season, he averaged 9.4 points and 5.9 rebounds. Soon after, all the problems started. He wasn't willing to work, he was labeled as cocky and lazy and pretty much thought of himself as the second coming of Jesus. That didn't bode well with the league. He had problems with coaches, management, threw out racial slurs and was just an accident waiting to happen. He enjoyed his best season with Portland Trailblazers in 2006 when he averaged 14 points and 4.6 rebounds, but he also injured his knee, missed the next two seasons and ultimately wasn't worth the trouble anymore. He played in the league for 7 seasons and collected averages of 26.3 minutes, 10.1 points, 4.9 rebounds and 9.5 win shares. Not good enough for the third pick. Number 3. Marcus Pfizer, fourth pick of the 2000 NBA Draft. Marcus Pfizer had an impressive college career. In three years of Iowa State, he averaged 18.9 points and 7.4 rebounds. He was especially good in his last college season, when he averaged 22.8 points and 7.7 .7 rebounds. Chicago Bulls already had a power forward in Elton Brand, but they decided to use their fourth pick to draft another power forward in Marcus Pfizer. His rookie season was okay, as he averaged 9.5 points and 4.3 rebounds and made the 2001 All-Rookie Team. But after that, it was a bunch of nothing. He never developed into a full-time starter, and in his best season, he averages 12.3 points and 5.6 rebounds. In total, he had just a 6-year NBA career before he went overseas to play basketball somewhere else. His NBA career averages 20.9 minutes, 9.6 points, 4.6 rebounds and 2.7 win shares. Disappointing. Number 4. Dermar Johnson, 6th pick of the 2000 NBA Draft. The last disappointment of the 2000 NBA Draft on this list is Dermar Johnson. A high school All-American and Player of the Year played just one year for the University of Cincinnati before going pro. In that one year, he averaged 12.6 points and 3.6 rebounds, so Atlanta Hawks picked him up with the 6th pick of the 2000 NBA Draft and had to regret that almost right away. The 6'9 guard just wasn't that good to begin with. In his rookie season, he averaged just 5.1 points and 2.8 rebounds, and in his second and last season with Atlanta, he set up what would be his career best season of 8.4 points and 3.4 rebounds per game. He missed the season because of a neck injury and never reached that level again. 
He played for three more teams, but never developed into anything more than just 15 minutes per game type of player. He was battling with some injuries, but even when he was healthy, he just wasn't a player everyone thought of him before the draft. Just 7 seasons in the NBA, an average of 17.2 minutes, 6.2 points, 2.2 rebounds and 6.4 win shares. Disappointing. Number 5. Kwame Brown First pick of the 2001 NBA Draft Probably the best known player on this list and also the one who had a pretty long career was Kwame Brown. In high school, he was good. In his senior year, he averaged 20.1 points, 13.3 rebounds and 5.8 blocks. He was drafted number one by the Washington Wizards because at the time, it was cool to draft a big body. In his rookie season, Kwame disappointed big time, as he was able to average just 4.5 points and 3.5 rebounds. And his shot blocking was non-existent, it just vanished. He spent 4 years in Washington and had only one double digit point season in 2003-2004, which was actually the best season of his career, as he also averaged 7.4 rebounds. Lakers picked him up, but soon realized that he can't play and traded him to Memphis in the heist of the century. He bounced around the league all the way till 2013, when he was last seen with the Philadelphia 76ers. In total, as the first draft pick, he was nothing more than a backup center who averaged just 22.1 minutes, 6.6 points, 5.5 rebounds and 20.8 win shares for his 12 year career. One of the biggest draft busts ever. Number 6. Eddie Curry, 4th pick of the 2001 NBA Draft Another darling of the 2001 NBA Draft was Eddie Curry. Similarly to Kwame Brown, he posted great numbers in high school. In his senior year, Curry posted a year stat line of 22 points, 9 rebounds and 6 blocks. Add that to his 7 foot length and his size and skill was just too much to be ignored. This time, the luck struck out on the Chicago Bulls, who drafted Curry with the 4th pick. In his rookie season, Curry was a bit underwhelming, averaging only 6.7 points and 3.8 rebounds per game. In 4 total seasons with the Chicago Bulls, Curry averaged 11.8 points and 4.9 rebounds. A solid stat line for a backup center, but not the starting center Curry was supposed to be and was. He improved under the New York Knicks uniform where he averaged 15.2 points and 5.8 rebounds, but a lot of those stats were padded considering he was on a bad Knicks team. He did have two more short stints with Miami and Dallas, but ultimately didn't realize the potential he once had. A lot of that self-inflicted. Sure, he did have many injuries and health issues, but at least some of that was due to the fact that he never really cared enough to get himself in a good shape. His career stats, 24.9 minutes, 12.9 points, 5.2 rebounds and 21.7 win shares. Number 7. The Sagana Diop, 8th pick of the 2001 NBA Draft and yet another big man bust from the 2001 NBA Draft. This time, it's the Sgana Diop. Another high school standout with averages of 14.6 points, 13.2 rebounds and 8.1 blocks in his senior season. Diop was appealing enough for the Cleveland Cavaliers to draft him with the 8th pick. He didn't have the expectations of Brown and Curry, but still he was supposed to be much more than he was. In 4 seasons with Cleveland, he started only 5 games and averaged 1.6 points and 2.6 rebounds. His gaudy block numbers from high school dropped to just 0.9 blocks per game in Cleveland. After Cleveland, he joined the Dallas Mavericks where he enjoyed his best 2.5 seasons after 2.4 points and 4.8 rebounds. He also had stints in New Jersey, back in Dallas and Charlotte, but nothing impressive about those ones either. In total, he spent 12 years in the league and posted career numbers of 14 minutes, 2 points, 3.7 rebounds and 12.8 win shares. He has found his way on Utah Jazz coaching staff, so maybe he does better as a coach. Number 8. Jay Williams Second pick of the 2002 NBA Draft Jay Williams proved and polished his basketball talent for 3 years in Duke, where he averaged 19.3 points and 6 assists. He was a good shooter, played some D, so the Chicago Bulls thought, hey, this looks good, and drafted him with the second pick of the 2002 NBA Draft. His career was short though. He did have a promising rookie season averaging 9.5 points and 4.7 assists with acceptable shooting splits for a rookie, but then he literally crashed himself out of the league. He got himself into a motorcycle accident on June 19, 23. 
he wasn't wearing a helmet, got himself seriously injured and also released because he violated Bull's policy of not riding a motorcycle. He never got back to the league and now works as an analyst for ESPN. Very happy that he has gotten his life together, but his career stats as the second pick are disappointing. Just 75 games played, an average of 26.1 minutes, 9.5 points, 4.7 assists and 0.8 win shares. Number 9. Nikolos Tsikicvili, 5th pick of the 2002 NBA Draft. And with the number 5 pick of the 2002 NBA Draft, the Denver Nuggets select Nikolos Tsikicvili. That was probably the last time you heard his name. Why he got drafted so high is beyond me. Before the draft, he played in Europe for 13 games and averaged 6.6 .6 points per game. Did those gaudy numbers trigger Denver? Who knows? But in the NBA, he was a no-show. His best season was his first one, when he averaged 3.9 points and 2.2 rebounds. Awesome indeed. He spent just 4 seasons in the NBA in total, never even coming close to his rookie numbers, but he is still playing all around the world. As recent as 2019, he played for Bayreuth Club, whatever that is. In NBA, however, he has career averages of 11.3 minutes, 2.9 points, 1.8 rebounds and minus 1.6 win shares. Number 10. Dejan Wagner, 6th pick of the 2002 NBA Draft. Dejan Wagner was mostly known to the NBA teams as that kid who scored 100 points in a high school game. Even though it is just high school, it's still very impressive. In University of Memphis, he didn't score 100 points, but he still averaged a cool 21.2 points per game. Hello Cleveland! They drafted him with the 6th pick of the 2002 NBA Draft. Things didn't look so bad in his rookie season, as he averaged 13.4 points and 2.8 assists, but it all went down from there. Various injuries, lack of consistency, all contributed to 3 more bad NBA seasons, 2 with Cleveland and 1 with the Warriors. In total, 4 years in the league and averages of 21.4 minutes, 9.4 points, 1.9 assists and 0 win shares, which means he pretty much added nothing to the team. Number 11. Darko Milicic, 2nd pick of the 2003 NBA Draft The 2003 NBA Draft is widely regarded as one of the best drafts ever. After all, it gave us LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, Chris Bosh and believe it or not, Darko Milicic, who was drafted with the 2nd pick. Detroit hoped that the 7 foot European with a labeled soft touch would help them to win the NBA championship, and in theory he did. The Pistons won the 2004 championship, but not because of Darko. In his rookie season, he averaged only 1.4 points and 1.3 rebounds. His most impressive season up to that point happened in 2008 as a part of the Memphis Grizzlies team, when he averaged 7.2 points and 6.1 rebounds. After that, he had a couple of good seasons for the Timberwolves where he averaged 8.8 .8 and 8.3 points, but nothing more. He was out of the NBA at just 27 years old and hasn't played since 2012-2013 season where he played just one game. His career averages 18.5 minutes, 6 points, 4.2 rebounds and 7.1 win shares. He tried to pursue a kickboxing career but failed and now works as a farmer. A big bust indeed. Number 12. Michael Sweetney, 9th pick of the 2003 NBA Draft In three years of Georgetown, Michael Sweetney impressed with his scoring touch and rebounding ability. For such a big guy, he was somewhat undersized only at 6'8", but that didn't stop him from producing. For his college career, Sweetney averaged 18.2 points and 9.2 rebounds. In the NBA, however, everything wasn't as smooth. He got drafted pretty high with the 9th pick by the New York Knicks, but in New York he wasn't able to replicate even a half of his production in college. In his rookie season, he averaged only 4.3 points and 3.7 rebounds. In his second year, he improved slightly to 8.4 points and 5.4 rebounds, but not enough for the Knicks to keep him. He was traded to the Chicago Bulls for Eddie Curry and in Chicago he had two underwhelming seasons averaging only 6 points and 4.1 rebounds. He struggled with weight, that impacted his health and performance and in the end he had only a 4 year NBA career with averages of 15.5 minutes, 6.5 points, 4.5 rebounds and 7.8 win shares. Number 13. Sean Livingston, 4th pick of the 2004 NBA Draft It almost hurts to put Sean Livingston on this list because of all his contributions to 3 Warriors championships. No, he wasn't the catalyst of all the success, but he was a damn big part of it. 
The problem is that considering when he was drafted, he should be considered a bust. A lot of colleges wanted Livingston as he was considered a 5-star recruit, but he opted to jump to the NBA straight out of high school. Livingston was drafted in the 2004 NBA draft with the 4th pick by the Clippers and ended up playing just 30 games in his first season, averaging 7.4 points and 5 assists. At 6'7", he was a pretty tall point guard who could shoot, defend and set up offense. Unfortunately, he never developed into a 5-star recruit he was supposed to be. He never averaged double-digit points in the NBA and a lot of that was because of his catastrophic knee problems. Like I said, it hurts to put him on this list but I'm glad he was able to carve out a pretty long career for himself even with all the injuries that cost him his prime. For his NBA career, Sean Livingston carries averages of 6.3 points, 3 assists, 29.9 win shares. Not worthy of the 4th pick unfortunately. Number 14. Rafael Arujo 8th pick of the 2004 NBA Draft Another big man bust from the 2000s is Rafael Arujo, who was expected to be a great complementary piece to Chris Bosh and the Toronto Raptors. Drafted with the 8th pick, it was expected that Rafael would show some of his skills from college where in 2 years he averaged 15.1 points and 9.5 rebounds. Instead, what Toronto got was an unready player. He spent just 2 years in Toronto and was able to average only 2.9 points and 3 rebounds. Utah Jazz tried to revive his career for a year, but all they got was 2.6 points and 2.4 rebounds. His NBA career was over after only 3 seasons and averages of 11.4 minutes, 2.8 points, 2.8 rebounds and minus 0.4 win shares. Number 15. Andrea Bargnani, first pick of the 2006 NBA Draft. Now, I was hesitant to put him on this list just because there were so many players I already had to cover, but since this list is so big, you just can't make your 2000s draft bus list without Andrea Bargnani. You just can't. Before the NBA draft, he already had a 4 year professional career in Europe. He was one of EuroLeague's best young players and was named the rising star of EuroLeague. All that plus his ball handling skills, shooting touch and length and comparison to Dirk Nowitzki prompted the Toronto Raptors to draft him with the first pick of the 2006 NBA Draft. What they got was a scorer with a slightly worse shooting than advertised and absolutely nothing else. No defense, almost no rebounding and I guess no winner gene as well. He did have some successful seasons like in 2011 when he averaged 21.4 points and 5.2 rebounds for the Raptors but overall he couldn't offer anything besides some points. And when he started to get injured a lot, well, that was just the end. In total, Bargnani spent 10 seasons in the NBA and carries averages of 28.7 minutes, 14.3 points, 4.6 rebounds and 18.9 win shares. Sure, the stats aren't that bad when you compare them to other people on this list, but they're not great either. Hey, on a positive note, he isn't the worst ever. Number 16. Adam Morrison, 3rd pick of the 2006 NBA Draft. Michael Jordan's first pick ever was Adam Morrison. Oh jeez. Morrison was good in college, averaging 19.7 points and 5.1 rebounds, and he was especially impressive in his last year of college, when he averaged 28.1 points and 5.5 rebounds. Now that's a talent you just can't let slip by. Or at least, that's what Jordan thought. In his rookie season, Morrison averaged 11.8 points and 2.9 rebounds and made the all-rookie team but then had to sit out a season because of a knee injury. He never was the same. He spent two more seasons in the NBA, a half season with Charlotte and one and a half with the Lakers. He ended his NBA career winning the NBA championship with the Lakers in 2010. Champion he is, but are the career numbers of 24 minutes, 7.5 points, 2.1 rebounds and minus 1.4 win shares champion worthy? Those are bust worthy. Number 17. Tyrus Thomas. 4th pick of the 2006 NBA Draft. Oh my, the 2006 NBA Draft was so bad. Almost as bad as the 4th pick Tyrus Thomas. After averaging 12.3 points and 9.2 rebounds in one year at the Louisiana State, I guess Tyrus Thomas was seen as this great talent who would bloom in the NBA. I mean, you can't really blame the Portland Trailblazers for drafting him with the 4th pick, but you can blame the Chicago Bulls for trading for Tyrus Thomas and giving away LaMarcus Aldridge in return. In Chicago, Tyrus Thomas bloomed into a player who in his best season averaged 10.8 points and 6.4 rebounds. After a trade to Charlotte, Thomas descended into a player who averaged 10.1 points and 5.5 rebounds. 
and after that, well, there was just two games for the Grizzlies. He wasn't that good to begin with. He was a solid rotation player who could give you something, but you usually don't look for those with your fourth pick. For his NBA career, Tyrus Thomas averaged 19.7 minutes, 7.7 .7 points, 4.8 rebounds and 13 win shares. Number 18. Sheldon Williams, 5th pick of the 2006 NBA Draft. The 6'9 forward spent 4 years in Duke and had some great years there. He averaged a double-double in his last two college seasons and in his senior year averaged 18.8 points and 10.7 rebounds. For his whole college career, he carried averages of 13.9 points and 9.1 rebounds and it was enough to be drafted with the 5th pick by the Atlanta Hawks. In the NBA though, he didn't feel that imposing. He started on the wrong note by averaging only 5.5 points and 5.4 rebounds in his rookie season, and that actually was his best season as a pro. He bounced around the league because nobody really wanted to commit to him. He just wasn't that good. He never again averaged even 5 points per season, which just gives us a logical conclusion that he's a bust. He played for 7 NBA teams and spent a total of just 6 seasons in the league. Career averages of 15.5 minutes, 4.5 points, 4.3 rebounds and 9.9 .9 win shares speak for themselves. On a positive note, he was married to another beautiful basketball player Candace Parker and she was much better than her husband at basketball. Number 19. Patrick O'Brien, 9th pick of the 2006 NBA Draft. The Notorious P.O.B. Such a cool nickname for a basketball player that spent just 3 years in the NBA. 11.6 points and 7.8 rebounds in 2 years of Bradley, nothing to sneeze at but nothing special. Drafted with the 9th pick of the atrocious 2006 NBA Draft by the Golden State Warriors. In his best season, averaged 4.7 points and 2.5 rebounds for the Toronto Raptors. For his career, averaged 5.8 minutes, 2.1 points, 1.4 rebounds and 0.5 win shares. Enough said, let's just move on. Number 20. Greg Oden. First pick of the 2007 NBA Draft. This one hurts too because Greg Oden never should have been a bust. He never actually was. He was very good when he was on the court. The sad truth is that he almost never was on the court. His chronic knee problems were painful to watch and read about. In his only college season at Ohio State, Oden averaged 15.7 points and 9.6 rebounds. And since Portland needed a big guy, they drafted a big guy over Kevin Durant who already has established him as an all-time great. Perhaps Portland should have remembered what happened the last time they drafted a big time center with injury concerns when they were looking for one like, I don't know, 20 something years ago in Sam Bowie? Orton missed his rookie season, had a relatively healthy first season in the league by playing 61 games, and in just 21.5 minutes per game, he posted a stat line of 8.9 points and 7 rebounds. That was his peak. Next year, he played in just 21 games before suffering injury again. Then he had a bunch of setbacks and missed 3 years of basketball. He did try a comeback for the Miami Heat in 2014, but he just wasn't able to really perform because of all the knee problems. In total, he just played in 105 NBA games and carries career averages of 19.3 minutes, 8 points, 6.2 rebounds and 7.3 win shares. Injuries suck, but since he was the first pick, you have to take that into account and call him a bust. Number 21. Yi Yanlan, 6th pick of the 2007 NBA Draft. You know what happens when you have a bigger than life figure in the NBA from a foreign country that hasn't yet been known producing basketball players yet somehow that guy, even when injury prone, was successful in his short time in the league? As a draft guy, you assume that this is it, the talent pool is open and we have another talent from China coming in. I can't miss talent. I'm of course talking about Yao Ming's success in the NBA and the hype that was put around Ji Yanlian, let's be honest, just because he was from the same country as Yao Ming. Ji Yanlian was never Yao, he was never supposed to be. He was rated too high by everyone and busted in the NBA. The 7 feet tall chairman was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks had an ok rookie season averaging 8.6 points and 5.2 rebounds and after Milwaukee saw that he's no Yao Ming, they gave him to New Jersey. There he had a semi-successful season averaging 12 points and 7.2 rebounds, one more season in Washington and Dallas and he was out of the league and never returned.
For his career, Yi Yanlian averaged 22.2 minutes, 7.9 points, 4.9 rebounds and 3.1 win shares. Like I said, no Yao Ming. Number 22. Michael Beasley. Second pick of the 2008 NBA Draft. Oh, and here we come to Mr. Beasley. A great scoring talent, not a willing defender who just last year played a bit for the Los Angeles Lakers. Beasley had a fantastic one year of college in Kansas State, where he averaged 26.2 points and 12.4 rebounds. Surely he entered the 2008 NBA Draft with a lot of hype and was drafted with the second pick by the Miami Heat. He was a solid scorer, he always was, just not as good against the NBA competition and not as good as advertised. Add in some personal issues, lack of motivation, and you have yourself a guy who scores but really doesn't do anything else. Beasley was always a gifted scorer. In 11 NBA seasons, he's averaged double digit points in 7 of them, and even averaged 19.2 points per game for a whole season in Minnesota. But that was just so long ago, and Beasley probably will be back in the NBA someday as he is just 30 years old, but I guess the clock has run out on this guy. He just doesn't have the makeup of a real NBA star, although he had all the talents. Considering what he was supposed to be, his career averages of 22.8 minutes, 12.4 points, 4.7 rebounds and 15.6 win shares are very disappointing. Number 23. OJ Mayo. Third pick of the 2008 NBA Draft. Another gifted scorer makes the list of the biggest NBA Draft busts and it's OJ Mayo. After averaging 20.7 points and 4.5 rebounds in one year at USC, OJ Mayo was considered as the top prospect heading into the 2008 NBA Draft. So thought Minnesota Timberwolves, who drafted him with the third pick, but immediately traded him to the Memphis Grizzlies basically for Kevin Love. What a good trade that was for the Timberwolves. Memphis, however, saw how overrated was OJ Mayo. He did score for Memphis and did that at a high level. He averaged 18.5 points, 3.8 rebounds and 3.2 assists as a rookie. It all went down from there though. Each year his scoring averages and shooting percentages dropped. After 4 years in Memphis, he joined Dallas for a year where he was able to score some ball averaging 15.3 points per game. Then he spent 3 seasons in Milwaukee which were his last seasons in the league. On July 1, 2016, Mayo was banned from the NBA for 2 years for drug violation, which just further downspiraled his career and he hasn't been back in the NBA since. And I doubt he'll ever be again. So for his career, he averaged 30.9 minutes, 13.8 points, 3.1 rebounds and 21.8 win shares. Number 24. Hashim Thabit, second pick of the 2009 NBA Draft. Whenever a player who is taller than 7 feet shows up, it always catches eye of some teams. In the case of Hashim Thabit, the hype was a bit warranted. In three college seasons at UConn, he averaged 10.3 points, 8.5 rebounds and 4.2 blocks. He was a defensive stopper and a tall one. I guess that's what the Memphis Grizzlies needed when they drafted him with the second pick of the 2009 NBA Draft. He flopped right away. He couldn't even earn playing time on a bad team. Do I even need to read his stat line? I'll read his rookie numbers. 3.1 points, 3.6 rebounds and 1.3 blocks. He couldn't top that for the rest of his career. He's been bouncing around the league and has at least dressed for 4 teams. He hasn't played in the NBA since 2014 and currently holds career averages of 10.5 minutes, 2.2 points, 2.7 rebounds and 4.8 win shares. Oh, where did that talent go? And number 25. Johnny Flynn, 6th pick of the 2009 NBA Draft. A 6 foot tall, quick scorer out of Syracuse once caught an eye of the Minnesota Timberwolves. In two years at Syracuse, Johnny Flynn averaged 16.6 points and 6 assists and the Timberwolves needed a point guard so I guess it made some sense to draft him. Flynn had an ok rookie season averaging 13.5 points and 4.4 assists but everything else from there on was just a misery. His shooting and decision making got worse and worse and he didn't have the build to really bang and do something else. Flynn had very short stints in Houston and Portland, but these two teams as well as the Timberwolves themselves couldn't see a reason why this guy was drafted number 6. We might have forgotten about you Johnny if a certain all time great point guard wasn't drafted right after you. We last saw Johnny Flynn in the NBA almost 8 years ago. Any questions? A bust that holds a career stat line of 22.9 minutes, 9.2 points, 3.9 assists and minus 1.1 win shares. 
Whew, that was a long video, so thanks for watching. Hope you did watch it till the end and enjoyed it. I know it's a long one, but hopefully you were entertained and saw something you liked. Can you add more players to this list of busts? Share your thoughts on the players I mentioned in the comments. I'll appreciate that very much. There's one more bust video coming your way very soon. Please like this video and let others see it by sharing it with your friends. Don't forget to press that subscribe button to not miss any videos in the future. If you're still with me, you're a champ and a real proud member of Purple Nation. Thanks. This is Purple Prince, and I'm out.